easily. It gets on there, it doesn't peel off or break off. You're gonna put the lid back on. Well, I still have this not by the fire, but still in the uh, path of clean air. Again, you reach up here and slide the lid back. Notice how I'm sliding it back so this lid doesn't fall out. And then while the lid is still kind of pressed up against the rim of the glass, hold it there and drop it in. In between transfers, you're going to re-sterilize your scalpel. And you might have a little bit of bits of uh, mycelium, on there, mycelium on there that you can, you can wipe out. Maybe some soot too. Although the soot doesn't cause a problem, it actually helps to absorb the heat because it's black. I'm going to rotate this dish a little bit too. So the, so the next slice is coming towards you. That way, if, if you sliced to the left or the right, you would also push the dish. That's why it's good to have something like this paper towel to keep the dish from moving. Alright. Also too, if it's really hot and you're only cutting a small piece, you would want to dip the scalpel in the somewhere they're not using repeatedly, maybe flip it upside down too, and cool it off. And then come over here, slice out another wedge. And you don't want to make any wedges bigger than that too, otherwise it'll be difficult. Difficult to get out because it'll be too heavy and fall off your scalpel. Oh, and we flop that in. Now we can go ahead and uh, if I can catch the edge of this. There we go. And tighten down that lid good again. Then we're going to give it a gentle swirl. And that culture is ready. We'll mark it with a K for King. If you want to date it, you can date it for today's date, which is the 23rd. That's ready to go. Now since we're only doing one transfer really to that, I can go ahead and move the fire out of the way. Either whip it out with your hand, or if you're really careful, you can use the, uh, the bell that comes with it and get it up on there and put it out. And all right, that's how you, uh, that's how you make a liquid culture from a petri dish. Now the way that you will be doing it at the start is you're going to get a syringe in the mail. It will have a, uh, a plastic cap that's already uh, separate from this. It'll be in its own uh, medical kind of like uh, packaging that you have to peel apart. And what you'll do is you'll unpeel that needle. You can see uh, how they kind of screw. You would unpeel it without, without uh, touching the needle, you know, keep, keeping your fingers only on the plastic parts and uh, carefully screw it into the syringe. And then all you'd have to do is take the cap off and really just open your jar up. And you would do it like the same way, sliding it back on so the, the lid of the where the disc is slides over the glass lid of the jar, or glass rim of the jar. And you would just, without even putting the needle into the jar, squirt about oh, 10 to 20 cc's, which each little hash mark you see on the syringe is one cc. And you would do the same thing, close it up. The same goes, like I said, for if you had a uh, spore syringe. The spores will take longer though, It'll take about five days for them to even get started. But in only about three days, even less, 
you'll notice that all the yeast that we put in here has settled to the bottom and the rest of the liquid is, is clear. You'll be able to see through it. Uh, usually the pieces of the uh, agar will float to the bottom and you'll start seeing a fuzziness growing off them, very noticeable. And that's the mycelium recovering off the agar wedges. And what you'll do every three days, you give it a, a swirl, enough that the screws go around and chop up all the uh, mycelium that's growing off the wedges. And uh, you'll notice about two, three days, the yeast will settle back down and it'll be clear again. That's really once it gets clear again, that's when you know you, you can uh, give it another swirl if you want. And the swirling, of course, like I said before, will redistribute the mycelium and give it greater points of inoculation, allowing it to spread through the, uh, the liquid culture faster. Another thing I should mention too that I forgot is that you want to have one of these surgical style uh, filter masks that are meant to filter the air coming out of your mouth, not going in. And you can get these in uh, the pharmacy section at you know your local grocery store or whatnot. And uh, I'm not wearing it actually for this purpose of this video because my voice would be muffled. But uh, you really should be wearing one of these. Otherwise, air from your mouth, which is full of bacteria and whatnot, can uh, make its way up to your working area if you're too close or talking too loud or singing or whatever. They tell you you're not supposed to sing while you're doing this, but as long as you got one of those on, it don't matter. Okay, we're going to wipe this down and I also want to show you too how to take one liquid culture that's already done and propagate it into more liquid cultures. And you can do this many times. Um, I can't really tell you how many times you could do it because I've never had a problem of running it too thin where uh, I'm guessing you could probably make eight, eight to ten transfers before you would see, maybe see some problems of uh, what's called senescence, which is old age basically for mushroom mycelium. And uh, it'll stop uh, being a good producer of mushrooms because it'll just be getting old from so many ex uh, transfers to new jars and having to re-expand again. So first things first, this jar's been sitting in my fridge, um, just hanging out there. Because you can see, hopefully, that it's pretty chunky with uh, floating white mycelium in there. It's opaque. See the light coming through it. But we got to clean it up, sanitize it first. So I'm going to take one of these uh, syringes that I use with alcohol in it for the purpose of uh, sanitizing. And you see where I have a kind of a, uh, a curved neck uh, stem that I've jammed into uh, a bottle here. It works good like that. You can just buy a regular bottle you know, with it already, but yeah. And I'm gonna stick uh, my syringe in here and squirt a little bit into it and suck at the same time in the syringe and fill it up halfway. You can see a little bit of air in there. You can f always, always, always face a syringe away from you because it will squirt. And you don't want to get alcohol in your eye. It'll burn, burn, burn. You might even have to go to the ho hospital for it. And first thing we're going to do is squirt half the syringe under the jar lid on this side, flip it over, and squirt the other half of the syringe under the jar lid on the other side. So. You want to do it evenly. And this is going to get anything that's settled underneath it that you could not get and wiped with a paper towel that has alcohol on it. And if you squirt too hard, you can go back and use some more, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're going to get our paper towel soaked again. Always wipe your hands down first. Wipe your area if you've forgotten to. Gonna soak the filter wet with alcohol. And I kind of use the motion where I'm using my thumb on top pressing and then my fingers curled up underneath to kind of get them in all these little nooks and crannies in the jar lid. 
and kind of hold it there and then wipe the top portion of the jar off like that. And then while making sure this jar is held up straight and you're not sloshing the liquid too bad, work around the jar and the bottom of it and wipe underneath where it was. And now you're, uh, you are totally sanitized. Now, go ahead and take the foil off these. Now to have some organization in our work area, we got to position everything how we want it. So it's not in the way, so we're gonna, for my sake, since again, I'm left-handed, um, for some reason I like to pour with my right hand, it just feels right, it might feel right to you, you just have to try it and see. I'm gonna go ahead and ahead of time loosen all the lids on the jars that are ready to uh, be inoculated. If somehow you forget which one's which, you can always, you know, remember clear and cloudy. Hopefully you're labeling things too. Keep the two that you're not going to inoculate up as close and in line together um, to the flow hood. You always want to too, keep things about two or three inches from the margin because you can still have some air swirl in. And that's, you know, right about there is the perfect safe zone. Now we're going to go ahead and since, now, all right, if we were using this jar completely, we could go ahead and just take the lid off and set it to the side. But because I'm only going to be putting a little bit of this culture into each jar and putting the lid back on for later use, we're going to be, want to be careful with this lid. And we're going to take it off, carefully set it in front of the flow hood like that. It'll be the, the highest priority because we might, you know, touch it and everything and you might slosh something up on it eventually and you just want to keep everything as sanitary and clean as possible. So now that we have this open and up towards the flow hood, we're going to, again, with one hand, reach back and slide it over and pour just the tiniest bit. That's all you really need. Of course, if you filled it halfway up with culture and halfway up with fresh uh, liquid culture, it would colonize the new uh, solution very quickly. So if you're in a pinch, that's how you can speed up some things. We're going to go ahead and move that off to the side. And this is going to be like a kind of automated eventually where you just reach over, grab the next one, move along like assembly line. Always remember to tighten your, tighten your lids down. Now that I have all three inoculated, I'm going to carefully reach back here and without getting my fingers in between the inside of the lid, I'm gonna flip it back up onto the original Original jar, tighten it back down good. And I can either store that back in the fridge or use it for some project later in the day. Well, I guess that concludes uh, on how to do the liquid cultures. Now we'll get into how to make the grain spawn using preferably rye grain. And we'll use these liquid cultures to inoculate that grain which will then inoculate the straw or whatever substrate we're using to uh, fruit the mushrooms down in our basement or uh, wherever area you're doing.